All right, so I'm in here in the pond with Bella and Big Mac. Got Bella right here with me, and then Big Mac is over in the shallow end, away from me a little bit. And I wanted to talk about how much food does an alligator need to eat in a day? That's one of the most common questions that I get. How much food do they eat per day? Uh, you know, what? how many pounds, how many kilos, all this kind of stuff. And it's always like per day. And what people don't realize is they don't eat every day. Uh, they don't even eat every, sometimes every week, depending on the weather. So crocodilians, alligators and crocodiles, they don't produce their own body heat. She's trying to, man, she's trying to get the phone there. So they don't produce their own body heat. And so because of that, they eat a fraction of the amount of food that you do, or even your dog or your cat, really. So even an alligator like Bella here or Big Mac, you know, Big Mac is 10 foot two. And she's really, she really wants to get the phone. Um, is going to eat less in a year than like a regular sized dog. Look at her. She is really going for it. You can't, you can't get that. That's my phone. You can't eat that. Uh, but yeah, so because they don't produce their own body heat, they don't metabolize like we do. They rely on the surrounding environment for a thermal regulation. Uh, they really eat a fraction of the amount of food that a mammal would. So since these guys are reptiles, again, not producing their own body heat, relying on the surrounding environment for thermal regulation. So they really don't eat very much at all. Now, in captivity at most facilities, uh, most alligators and crocs are often fed about once a week. That's kind of the norm is what what most places do and uh, it's once a week with like realistically just a couple of pounds of meat for each animal once a week and that is enough to suffice and not even suffice that's enough to make a lot of them overweight most of the time honestly she is so fixated <laughs> trying to eat the camera but um but yeah so most places are going to feed them once a week but uh you know now that i'm up here in north florida it gets very cold in the winter so in the winter these guys don't eat at all sometimes for depending on what species we're talking about uh for weeks or even months at a time they're not eating anything at all so and i i do say it depends on what kind so alligators are the most cold tolerant crocodilian so they can handle the cold the best and uh, so far i think their appetite has also been the most consistent even when it's relatively chilly out um, but meanwhile the crocodiles are much more cold sensitive and so i don't even attempt to give them anything if it's even a little bit uh, on the colder end but okay let, let's back up a second what constitutes constitutes as quote unquote cold. So like right now, it's July, it's in the 90s, the air temperature's in the 90s, but the water in this pond is in the 70s. So I am wearing a wetsuit right now because it does get a little bit chilly when you're in here for a couple of hours. And uh, since I already plan on it, I suited up and decided I was gonna film a couple different video topics today. So, you know, in the water with the wetsuit and everything like that, be able to do that and handle the cold. Now, that quote unquote cold is really not that cold. And uh, in the winter, the air temperature at night can even get in the upper 20s here, but we keep our water running on all of our crocodilians. That way, the water temperature can stay in that nice like 70, upper, you know, upper 70 degree range, somewhere around there. Meanwhile, the air temperature can get pretty low. OK, uh, but anyway, so usually if it is if it gets like in the 50s, I'm not feeding any of the crocs, probably not any of the gators either, really. Um, and so what can happen is if you if you do feed them when the temperature gets really low like that, uh, their digestive enzymes are not able to properly function in low temperature and the food can literally rot inside of their stomach which can cause them to regurgitate the food, which is gross, nasty, smells real bad, or in worst case scenarios can even cause uh, potential health complications. So that's why like when it gets cold like that, we just, we just don't give them anything at all. And, uh, and they're fine with that. You know, uh, coming back to really, you know, the, the point or the question is like, well, how often do they eat? Better question is how long can they go without eating? So that's a much more interesting and crazy one make sure she doesn't come for my legs she she definitely has a little bit of an obsession with trying to bite me in the legs and big mac is just chilling back there he has not come over you can see him all the way back there um but anyways though uh so how long can they go without eating is a really good question so uh we already know that they can go several months no problem without eating in the winter here that could be like four months of not eating perfectly fine for them and in survival situations they can go over a year without eating anything at all zero food intake for an entire year just 
absolutely crazy to consider. And then I have also heard they can even go longer than that. Now, to be able to find the veracity of such a claim, though, it obviously... It, it, well, it, it does. It, it can become animal abuse. If you are purposefully not feeding one of these guys for over a year just to see what happens and the animal's health is declining, I mean, at what point are you going to feed them? Are you just waiting for them to die and then that's when you conclude how long they can last? Obviously, that's not something that, you know, we're going to do and I would never advocate for somebody else to do. So it becomes a bit of a difficult thing to be able to adequately test, right? So how are you going to find out such an answer? Oh, she just bit the stick down there. So she starts creeping up on my legs right there. Um, so yeah, how would you adequately test that? So I have heard anecdotally, supposedly, that uh, some uh, alligators have gone like even even two years without eating anything. I don't know if that's true. Um, you know, and, and again, like, how would you, if you are aware of that having happened with no food intake, then I would assume that means it was a captive animal because then you're in control of the amount of food intake. And then if you chose to not feed that captive animal for two years, that's animal abuse, right? You know, I mean, without a doubt. So like, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's a little tricky to say what exactly is the extreme of what they're able to do. And if you were, uh, if you're talking about a situation in the wild, well, how do you know, you know, unless you have like a camera on that animal properly monitoring it for two years at a time, you're not going to really have a right answer on that, you know, so it does, it definitely does get a little bit tricky, but either way, so um, without a problem, any of these guys, if they're already at a healthy body weight, could go six months not eating anything at all. And that's like, that's pretty much fine. Um, and then if they are at a healthy body weight, in a survival situation, going an entire year without eating anything at all, definitely, uh, definitely within the realm of possibility and has actually been shown before. So that that's a big one right there, you know. But again, I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to advocate for anybody to try to do an experiment and kind of find this kind of stuff out. We don't want to do that to these poor guys. Um, now, their ability to go such a long time without eating anything at all is one of the factors as to how they have survived for millions of years. So crocodilians are like 240 million years old for the entire group. And uh, so obviously they survived the KT extinction that took out most of the dinosaurs. So how did they survive that massive extinction event? This is a big factor. Being able to go so long without having to eat anything at all is one of the big reasons that allowed them to survive. Now, also living in an aquatic environment, uh, since that allows them, well, you can survive a lot more in an aquatic environment as far as like the blast from the asteroid, all that kind of fun stuff. That's a whole different topic. Um, but either way, definitely being able to go so long without eating is massively advantageous. Now, another thing that allows them to go so long without eating, you know, that relatively slow metabolism, not producing your own body heat. And then for the most part, being an ambush predator that really doesn't do much activity through the day on a normal day, especially in an instance where like, times are tough, let's say there's a drought, you know, things, situations, hello, uh, situations like that, where uh, they are aware that they are in uh, kind of dire straits. If, the, if there is a drought and they're in kind of stuck inside of a mud pole, that kind of thing, that does often happen with crocodilians. So in that kind of an instance, uh, they are going to often go into what's called estivation, where it's kind of, it's similar to hibernation. And so that's what they're going to do to try to uh, conserve energy, you know? So being an ambush predator, massively advantageous for not having to eat very often. So if you're already in the best case scenario, really not moving that much, not really being a pursuit predator, not expending a huge amount of energy and just kind of sit and wait and creep up and ambush animals, you're not expending a lot of energy. You don't need to intake a lot of food to create that energy, right? And then again, understanding when you are in a rough situation and you need to conserve more energy, all these kind of things are going to help them in that aspect, you know? There you go, buddy. Now, as far as their diets do go in here, you know, we do give them, uh, we give them a lot of whole prey. We get rats. We get a lot of fish, thankfully, that we're able. We give them uh, deer, uh, hog, so uh, all that kind of different stuff. And then also a lot of chicken. Hi, my big guy. Now, in the wild... Um, if they are in one of these survival situations, crocodilians are really well known for being able to survive on very little. So uh, they will also eat things like snails. So even a big 10 foot alligator like this is eating these little tiny snails. And so that's going to really help them survive in those situations too. Snails, crayfish, 
really small fish, insects, frogs. So even as a large, massive predatory animal, they are really good at surviving on very small amounts of food and very small things to help them survive. So that's always a really kind of cool, interesting thing, I think. And I tell you what, man, it is hard to do both jobs here. You know, orienting the camera and then trying to keep myself safe and then moving around and then also trying to focus on what I'm saying and make kind of a clear and, and cogent argument here. It's definitely difficult to do all the things together. Okay. <laughs> but um, anyway, so let, let's see. That, that's exactly what I'm trying to do right now. So I remember if I hit all the points I wanted to hit on this, since obviously I'm just talking off the cuff. It's not like I have a script or anything here. Teleprompter right behind Big Mac right now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so... I think I hit most of the points that I did want to hit on, you know, like their ability to survive. Um, oh, no, no, there is a big one, too, is um, if so talking about small prey, being able to survive off a of small prey, but also talking about big prey. So if a alligator were to grab something like an entire deer, you know, that's going to really set back that clock on when he needs to eat again. So if they were to eat a very large meal like that, um, they are not going to need to eat for months anyway. So like, let's say he took down a whole deer and uh, he's able to eat his fill of it in one sitting. They will then stuff the deer up underneath the bank and like roots and tree limbs and then come back and feed on it again later. And so that's something they do like to do. Or we we're talking about like Nile crocs, uh, taking down a wildebeest, that sort of stuff. So, um, well, Nile crocs are a really good example where when there is uh, the great migration, they're going to take down wildebeest and zebra and really just gorge themselves on these animals within that one time period. And then that's it for the next several months. Now, it's not to say that's it as in like, they're going to pass up food or they or they won't eat anything like I'm sure they're going to catch some smaller stuff. But really, uh, that that great migration is what's really sustaining them each year and then smaller stuff in the time frame along the way, you know, so uh, being able to have that big, huge meal. And that's really your big meal for the next six months and then grabbing smaller stuff and, and whatnot snacks, if you will, along the way is what's going to help them out. Here comes Bella creeping too. He's trying to have. Big Mac in the frame there, but Bella's down on the bottom, being a little, little creepy there for the legs. But yeah, so that that's another one too is um, not having to eat. Now along this conversational line though is often, oh well, then that means if they're just well fed, they're, they they don't want to eat, right? No, that is incorrect. Um, that's when I get all the time. Oh, they're just kept well fed, and that's why they're not attacking you right now. No, no, no. This is part of being an apex ambush predator. Is you eat when the food is there. So even if you just ate, you're gonna to try to eat again. And uh, one of the places I worked at, this is a story I recall often and talk about, is like I would literally watch um, at this one park, they had like hundreds of alligators and they were fed when they would dump like a dump truck full of meat in there. And they would just eat and eat and eat until they throw it up and then eat the throw up back up. And that's literally what they would do all the time. So it's not like they get full and they want to stop eating. Now, uh, when they do have a lot of food, like their motivation slows down, certainly, uh, but they're still not going to like pass up a free meal. So even if he did eat a lot, you know, uh, a week ago, and then here comes an animal that just fell in the water, obviously they're going to go for it. They're going to try to eat that too, you know? Um, so as far as when people ask like, well, when do they need to eat again? They don't need to but they are always on the lookout for food. They always want more food. Even if they just ate, they want more food. So you can't think about it as it, as you would as a human. Like you can't try to put like, well, I would do this if I was, he doesn't think like you. He doesn't have your biology. He does not think like you. He does not think like your dog either. That's the thing that most people do compare most uh, animals they're like, oh, well, my dog does this and that's an animal. So all animals do this. And it's like, no, 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 it's a totally different thing. So he thinks like an alligator. He acts like an alligator, which is not like a human or like a dog or anything like that. So you really have to treat them as their own animal, as they are, which I know sounds common sense and does sound kind of silly to have to spell out. But like it is a it's an insanely common thing that people just relate them to the only other animal they really usually have experience with, which is usually dogs and cats, you know. And again, as a reptile, they just absolutely do not think or function in that way. Uh, so when does he need to eat again? 
Need is relative. He will take food anytime food is offered. He's always on the lookout for more food. Um, now, when is his motivation going to really increase? That does depend on the size of that last meal. Um, you know, was it a huge thing? Was it a small thing? All these different factors. How big is the animal already? What is his current body condition? Is he already of a good weight? Is he skinny? All these things come together. So that's why there really is. Whoa, he just swung straight up for the phone. Got to be real careful. He's, he's going to crush my phone one of these times. Didn't, I don't think it even came up on camera, but he just swung straight up for the phone out of nowhere. Um, but yeah, so all these things do kind of come together uh, to make it not have a straight answer, not have like a simple like, well, they have to eat every six hours and blah, blah, blah. Like, no, that's not, that's not reality, especially with any kind of crocodilian, you know? Um, so I think that kind of answers just about everything I wanted to touch upon on this subject. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, if you have any questions, and if you have any other ideas as far as like long form videos like this and what we could talk about more. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.